right, let's finish up section 4.1 with one more type of graph, and that's called a scattergram. Um, so I'll just show you what a scattergram is as we go through the example. So we're looking at the size of TV. Um, we measure that on the diagonal. We probably know this just from buying TVs, but maybe not. Right, we're measuring the diagonal in inches. Um, that's how they measure TVs. And then it's a sample of eight Vizio TVs at Costco, and we look at the price. So X will be TV size, so that means X goes horizontal. So TV size will go this way. We'll think of a scale in a second. We're not graphing a line yet. And then price is Y, so price goes up and down. And notice I am labeling words. We need words on our graphs um, so that when someone looks at this, they know what the numbers represent. And so a scattergram is plotting points, not drawing a line. So a scattergram is a graph with plotted points. So we're going to go ahead and plot these points. So we have eight points. Um, before we can plot, we need a scale. So for TV size, if you count this way, I think there's 20 boxes. And the largest TV is 70. So for scale, I'm going to squeeze that up here. Our max is 70, and we divide by 20 boxes. If I were doing this on paper, 20 by 10 or 10 by 10 is a good size. And let's see. 70 divided by 20. I'm probably not going to count by 3.5. That's not ideal. Um, you could round up to 4. I would probably round up to 5 just because 5 is easier to count by. So I'm going to count by 5s down here. Go ahead and label that, and then we'll do the vertical scale. So we're always rounding up to a nice number. And when I say nice, right, something that makes sense to count by. Fours are fine, right, but fives are much nicer. 60, 65, 70. And I'm just going to stop at 80, just because, again, we're only going to 70, so we don't need to go much farther. All right, let's do the other scale. So price, I'll do this in pink. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Looks like there's 11 boxes. And then let's see, what's the most expensive TV? 1680. All right, so we'll find that one more scale. Do not draw a line if you're ahead of me. Sorry, I'm struggling to click this. There we go. 1680 divided by 11. So 152 I am not counting by. Um, it's tempting to go down to 150, but rounding down never works. Um, we talked about this in chapter two. You always round up. Um, so I would probably I would just go all the way up to 200 because, again, we want something that's nice to count by. So you could go to 160 or 170, but those are kind of weird to count by. So 200 is just a nicer number to count by. So we'll do 200 up and down. 400, 600. It's all about something that makes sense to count by. Counting by 152 doesn't make sense. Counting by 160 works, but again, it's a little confusing. Um, 200s are just so much nicer. The whole point of making graphs is to make them easy to look at. All right, and let's plot some points. So these are my points, 32 and 230. So we go over to 32, slightly above 30, and slightly above 100. Our next one would be 39 and 350. All right, these are making points. So 39 is slightly under 40, 350. Just estimate. If you feel good, go ahead and do this without me. 40 and 490. Um, we're not, this is not going to make a line, so don't freak out. 47 and 650. 60 and 760. Sixty-five and eleven eighty. Two more. 
60 and 1300 so a scattergram is just plotting them all so 60 shows up twice that's fine that's just two different tvs um, they happen to be the same size but they have different prices and then 70 and 1680. if you need more time to graph just pause for a second get those points out and you'll get something that looks like this um, this is a scattergram right it's kind of like scattered points um, but what I do see is I see a somewhat linear pattern. I see a somewhat linear pattern. It's kind of a line, right? It's not perfect. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about how to find the line. Don't do that yet. And it's increasing. I think that's also important. It's going upward. For what pattern do we see? So what we're going to do is we're going to add lines to these graphs. So the line is given for now. In the next section, we'll talk about how to find those. But here's the equation of the line. So we're going to graph this line just like we did in the previous examples. So x, and then we're going to use y hats for lines, y with a hat on it. And the reason I'm using a different symbol is these are my actual y values. Oops, these are my y values. So I just want to call them something different. Um, so we're going to find two points and make a line. Um, use a different color if you can. Um, if you can't, I'll give you another thing you can do. I just want to keep them different from these black points. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose two x's. Um, I'm going to choose two x's in the same general area. So if I choose five, it probably won't work because there's no data over there. So I get to pick any x's I want. I think I'm going to pick 35 and normally I have a class pick if we're in person. But since we're not, I get to pick, how about 55, right? If you want, you could pick 70, you could pick 80, right? 45, just somewhere in that general region. We don't want to go too far this way or too far this way. But we get to pick any X's we want. So let's do 35 and 55. You can pick different numbers. And we're going to plug them into the equation. So Y hat is our new symbol for lines. We'll formally define that in the next section. And we have a really ugly equation, which is fine. We're just going to plug in 35, and we're going to plug in 55. And we have calculators to do all this math for us. If you want to try 70, right, go for 70. Um, sometimes it's nice to do three points just to have more. So let's do a third one just because we can, and we'll do 70. Notice that I just kind of pick some points spread out where the points are. So let's use a calculator. This is where second enters really nice. So make sure you hit the negative sign, 929.137. Just do everything at once. This is why we're using these calculators, times 35, enter. And we get 263. Um, because we're just plotting on the graph, decimals don't really matter. But if you want to keep it right, it would be 0.5. 4, 9 would round up to 5. Um, second, enter. And now you don't have to type all that and just change it to a 55. And we get 945.0. Rounding is not a big deal right now because, again, we're just plotting. So we'll talk about rounding more later. And then change it to a 70. And we get 1456.1. All right, so if you weren't able to use a different color, um, mark them with an X instead. So 35 and 263, I'll just estimate is right there. I just wanna indicate that these are not actual data points, so I wanna give them a different marking on the graph. 55 and 945, just again, use a different color or make it a little X, just a different symbol. And then 70 and 1456. Right. It's okay that it doesn't match the actual data because the lines are going to be approximations, which we'll get into. And then you can connect those to make a line. So connect the three blue ones or the three X's or whatever you used. So it doesn't fit the points perfectly, but it kind of fits the points, right? So does it seem like a good fit? I would say yes. It doesn't fit the points perfectly, but in general, it's fitting the pattern, right? 
it follows the pattern pretty well. So this is called an estimate. It's not a perfect line. Um, in the next section, we'll learn how to find these. Um, we're going to learn real life data doesn't make perfect lines, so our lines will just be estimates of the data. Cool. So let's interpret the slope and find something called error, and then we'll be done with this section. So the slope is an ugly number this time. We're not calculating slope with the calculator. We're just taking it from an equation. It will be given in an equation. So the slope here is 34.0753 over 1. Just got that from right here. We're not calculating anything. It'll be given in our equations. And it'll be the change in y, which is the change in price. over change in x, which is TV size. So TV size goes up by one inch. Remember, size was in inches. So for each additional inch in TV size, the price goes up by about $34. For each additional inch of TV size, right? size is going by ones the price increases by about 34, and I'll say an eight cents, because that'll round up to eight cents. Oh, seven, five, three. Cool. All right, let's do one example, um, one last part, and then I'll see you back for the next section. So one last new definition, maybe box this or something, it's called error. So error is just how far off we are. Sometimes we call it residual. Um, so we're just gonna do the data value. Um, we're gonna find the difference between the real data value and what our equation predicts. So we're going to take the data value, which is y. This is why I'm using a different letter for lines, minus our estimate. And then we're going to make an absolute value. Actually, no, we're not going to do that yet. We're going to um, keep it positive or negative for now. So our data value would be 490. This is the actual data value. Where did I come up with 490? It's right here. So for a TV size of 40 inches, the actual cost is 490. So a 40 inch TV costs $490. That's what that tells me. So my y value is 490. The problem is, is we don't know y hat. Y hat is the estimate from the equation. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that into the equation to figure out what the line estimates. If we look at the graph and we go to 40, right, the line and the point are not exactly the same. And that's what residual is, right? How far off are we, right? This point to this point, right? These are called residuals, the error. How far is my point from the line? because my line will not always be correct. It'll be a good estimate, but it won't be perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and plug into the equation. Let's do that in a different color. So y hat will be negative 929.137 plus 34.0753, and we're gonna plug in 40 for x. So we're basically comparing what the line predicts versus the actual data value. And then, you probably still have this on your calculator. Just change the 70 to a 40. And we get 433.875. That's what the line predicts, but the actual cost is 490. And so there is error. And the error would just be the difference. 
So we'll do 490 minus 433.875, and we're off by about $56. Error can be negative. This one is positive, but it can be negative. So this is how off the line is off by $56. That's what error represents. So 490 is the actual cost, 433 is a predicted cost. Um, so when we get into the next section, um, we'll talk about how to find these lines. So make sure you have your calculator ready for that next section because you really need it. So we'll figure out how I came up with this line in the next section. All right, that's it.